am Anus Peters and welcome in my research lab at Newcastle University. We are interested in developing sensors. So think of your nose so you can smell things, your ears so you can hear things, or your skin so you can sense whether it's cold or whether it's warm. Without you possibly knowing it, you have a lot of sensors in your body as well. They sense when nasty bacteria or viruses try to invade your body. And when they do, they give off a signal so you get an army of superheroes that start to fight off these infections. And the things that actually recognize these bacteria, that's what they call antibodies. Behind me, you can see a lot of different bacteria. So you can see they come in different sizes and shapes. Some of them are really good for you. They're, for instance, used to make uh, chocolate and to make cheese, but some of them can make you very sick. Here is an example of E. coli. It has these little tentacles, so it means it can move really fast. You've got millions of those in your gut, and normally they're very good for you. But unfortunately, some of them give you diarrhea. So within your body, you've got antibodies that can directly recognize those. It sends off a signal to your body, and then you start fighting off the E. coli. Because you have these antibodies, which are very good for detecting things. They're often used in centers as well. So where do you want to detect E. coli? Now, besides in your body, you want to look at food and water to make sure that it doesn't make you sick. And within these sensors, we often tend to use these antibodies because there's nothing better than nature itself to recognize E. coli. However, there are some disadvantages with that. They are very expensive, they're not very stable because they're used to working within your body, so that means at a very specific temperature. And then there's one really big disadvantage of that. We don't use humans to produce these antibodies. We actually use animals. You might not be aware of this, but in the EU, every year, one million animals are used to produce a lot of sensors. Not just for E. coli, but for a lot of other bacteria, for a lot of other compounds that might make you sick. So in this project, we look at contributing to animal welfare by completely replacing those antibodies that are derived from animals with some synthetic alternatives. So we try and mimic nature, and the way we do that is by using plastics. Now, plastics are made of polymers, and polymers comes from a Greek word. So the Greek word is poly, which means many, and meros means parts. So you've got many repeating parts. And plastics are all these synthetic polymers, and they have some additives in order to make them easier to work with. We have polymers that have cavities in them. And these cavities are tiny, tiny holes, which you can't really see with the eye, but you can see them with a special microscope. And these cavities are exactly the same size and the shape as the bacteria. We can make them very selective by tuning the size and the shape of the cavities that we're working with. And what happens when bacteria bind to these polymers? Well, you can monitor this in different ways. But what we mainly do is we look at a color change. Hi, I'm Ollie Jemison. I work here at Newcastle University, along with Marlos Peters and together we're developing a whole range of different polymers to sense antibiotics and bacteria in water systems. Here we can see a plastic sensor, which has been steeped in an orange coloured dye. It has been designed to detect a specific antibiotic. When the sensor is exposed to the antibiotic that it was designed for, we can see that the antibiotic replaces the coloured dye, resulting in the dye being pushed out by the antibiotic. Here is a second sensor we have designed, using a blue dye. Once again, when we introduce the antibiotic to the sensor, we can see that the blue dye is filtered out from the plastic sensor. However, if something other than the antibiotic is introduced, you will see that it simply passes through the sensor and you will not see the blue dye being pushed out and the liquid will be clear. This color change sensor is only one type of sensor platform. Others use fluorescent light or heat instead. I'm now going to show you a quick demonstration of some of the fluorescent polymers I've been developing that are aimed at sensing antibiotics in the water. So the first vial that you see is what we call the monomer. So the monomer is what you make polymers of. So this is a liquid and as you can see it's very fluorescent because it's got a molecule in there which is called fluorescein. So then when we polymerize it and then you actually get a solid particle, you can see that it's still very fluorescent but it's gone down a little bit. And then the next step is we take some of that solution and we polymerize a very thin layer onto the electrode. And the first one, you're not going to be able to see anything because this is a blank glass slide, so it doesn't contain any polymer. The next one after that has a little bit of a blue polymer on it. So again, you can see this blue shine. 
And the last one we used a yellow color. This is called fluorescein, which is added to it. So you have a little layer of polymer, something that you can't see by the eye, but as soon as you shine UV light to it, you see this lovely yellow color. So you can use these fluorescent properties of the polymers. But in my lab, we've developed a device that uses the temperature in order to determine the presence of antibiotics. So what you see here is a temperature control unit, which measures the temperature. Next to it, you've got the Bluetooth, so you can couple the device to either your laptop or your phone. This is the electrical signal, which can give out a certain voltage, so you can increase or lower the temperature. And then besides that, you've got resistors, which you can use to tune the voltage. And on the outside, you've got the inlets where the thermocouples that measure the temperature, where they go in. And here you can see these little cells into which we fit the electrodes. So as you can see, they're exactly the same size and shape of the electrodes that go in. These flow cells are made using 3D printing. The 3D printing device that we have at home melts polymers in order to make them in any size and shape. Now what we do in the end to close up the system, because you don't want the water to go anywhere, so we add a copper block on top. And copper is very conductive, so you can use that to monitor the temperature that goes from the copper back to the device. Where do we see this going in the future? Well, ideally, I've just shown you applications working for bacteria, but we'd also like to look at very small molecules, such as pharmaceuticals, and even smaller, such as ions. So really, you can use them for whatever you want to detect. You can't find them commercially just yet, but there is a company which is called Mid Diagnostics, which is working very hard on getting the first commercial sensors based on these polymers on the market, which will be used for detection of COVID-19. Think of all the animals that are used currently to produce these antibodies. Remember, this is one million animals per year. In an ideal world in the future, we would like to use these polymers to replace all antibodies that are currently based on animals.